Okay, so uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Arnel Madraso. I'm the teacher blogger. So it's uh, 6.20 in the morning, uh, January 13, 2022. And I'm doing a book review. Uh, the title of the, the novel is Seven Wonders, The Curse of the King. So this is the fourth book of Peter Leranges. So let me start by giving you the author's background. Okay. Peter Leranges is writing from the tradition of Rick Jordan's uh, Percy Jackson series. So, uh, this is his 167th book, while Rick Jordan, uh, uh, with its release, uh, Rick Jordan wrote already his 40th book. No? So, but then, between Peter Leranges' uh, storyline and uh, uh, Rick Jordan, it was the Rick Jordan's uh, books were chosen uh, by Hollywood to to turn into film. So, uh, but then you know, in in terms of storyline, it's more of a modern interpretation of Greek literature, where the modern scenario is interfaced with the ancient world. the The modern world is interfaced with the ancient world. So that's the storyline, no? So for those of you who are fan of Percy Jackson series, you will you will also enjoy this because somehow they are they're the same in terms of in terms of storyline. So the point of view is first person. So it's you know that as a technique used by the author, uh, it is effective because it's like the reader is able to identify with the with the protagonist or the main character who is uh, speaking from a first person point of view it's like you are inside the novel it's as if you are you are the one who is he is who is performing right so that's the advantage of the first person point of view so the as early as page 1 uh the name, the main character or the protagonist name, Jack McKinley, was already revealed. Page one. So that's a technique used for uh, to arrest the the attention of the amateur readers and those who are the beginner readers, no, uh, who are really not into difficult texts, would be able to identify, uh, follow right away the plot of the the story because the protagonist is already revealed. No, in page one, as early as page one. So there's humorous tone uh, appropriate for this age group. So basically, the target would be the teenagers. No? So the the tone, the humor, the expression, it's all teenagers. No? Uh, informal way of conversation. So And then the one distinct uh, linguistic feature here uh, that would talk about humor would be the backward uh, way of stating sentences or words. No? Uh, we call this backwardish, no? And this somehow brought consistent humor from several pages in the novel. It's like it's their code, no? Whenever they talk, whenever they pop up uh, jokes, no? They they are in fact making use of backwardish. Uh, I I thought that backwardish is really not something that is new, no, for us because Filipinos back in the seventies would use backwardish, no? Uh, for example, backward is linguistic uh, features like, for example, mayor for your me, you know. Uh, and this was used for comedy, you no. Know? So we are familiar with backwardish technique uh, as a humor. So I was surprised, you no. Know? In 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 a book like this, they are making use of backwardish uh, way of expressing humor. And then this is a family-oriented uh, story, or the motif is family-oriented, very much fam family-oriented, wherein the father is really part of the adventure of the teenagers. So, uh, so that adventure would capture the reader's attention, especially if the reader is a teenager who is uh, really friendly, you know, who, has a fr who has a group of friends. And so they would be reading this together, and that... Uh, the father was there to to really uh, show support uh, to Jack McKinley. Uh, and this reminds me of uh, the movie that was uh, that was uh, that came out uh, 1989 no? 
it became a 1989 hit. Uh, the film was titled uh, "Honey Who Shrunk the Kids." No, have you watched that? So, "Honey, Hon Honey Who Shrunk the Kids." The father, who was a scientist as well, here the father is also a biochemist, a scientist, is very much part of the adventure. Uh, so, in in that movie. Uh, honey who shrunk the kids same where the father was really part he was the one who shrunk them into very minute uh, creature and he is part of the children's adventure in fact he turned also himself into a minute creature in order to save his children so here in in the storyline the connection is jack mckinley compared to percy jackson uh, is really not still very self-reliant or independent so he needs the help of the father he needs the help of the father in his adventure while Percy Jackson in Ricky Jordan's uh, Percy Jackson series doesn't need uh, the help of his father because he he the storyline is that he is learning to be courageous and learning to really uh, surpass all obstacles that he is undergoing so here as early as page 12 uh, the the plot was already clarified into uh, I mean the plot was clarified in a way that you know there's this disappearance no sudden disappearance no? they're talking about the abrupt disappearance and then in as early as page 12 so since this is book 4 I'm aware I'm aware while I was reading this that this is already the book four. It seems like there's already that established plot no, from book one, book two, book three, book four. And in page 12, it was the sudden disappearance was uh, slowly being revealed. No, So they are now aware. It seems like they are now aware about this strange mystery. Why are they, the teenagers, were disappearing? And that this sudden disappearance was trying to 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 be explained by the daddy, by the father, who is a genetic scientist. So since he's a genetic scientist, his role was trying to find out what is causing this and what's the solution, what's the cure for this disappearance. They just disappear, you know. The teenagers, you know, are disappearing, in including including the the main characters, no. And then in. In, in page 12, uh, another character came popped out. Uh, that's Marco. Marco is a mystery mystery man here. And they were describing him as Prince of Ancient Atlantis. So that's giving us a vocabulary of uh, the Greek world in the ancient, ancient times. No? So as a reader, we wouldn't know. Uh, for me, uh, first time I encountered Marco in the story, I wouldn't know whether they're, they're telling the truth or they were just telling a joke about Marco. So it's still... Uh, as a reader, you want to find out whether that is really true, whether they are really talking about a true Prince of Atlantis, or is it just a joke? You know? Is it just a joke? No. So at this point, it was not clear. So this is, so this is a genetic problem or anomaly believed to be acquired from the, their Greek ancestors. So that's that's the explanation, uh, based on the conversation here in page twelve. It seems like they're talking about a genetic anomaly. You know? There's a genetic anomaly amongst these uh, teenagers who are disappearing. So they disappear because this is connection with their genes uh, that were handed to them by their Greek ancestors. So they are connected with the ancient world. So that, for me, <coughs> as early as page 12, made, made, it, uh, made it quite interesting for me to finish the novel. So I never stopped. I continue reading. <coughs> and then page 13 there, the core group, the friends, a group of friends who are the main characters, the main protagonist, are Ali, Cass, and Jack. So Jack McKinley is the main character, the protagonist. His support supporting characters would be Ali, Cass. No? So vocabulary is very easy to process, not very difficult to understand. Uh, as I said, the target uh, readership would be the teenagers. And then page 27, as early as page 27, the purpose was revealed. So what's the purpose? What's the purpose why they are having this adventure? They are going from one place to the other because they are looking for uh, the seven loculi or loculi for healing. 
So that seven locally is a form of uh, an energy, no? Uh, the lost uh, wonders, no? There are seven wonders, eh? Seven locally is a form of an energy, no? Uh, that they need to complete in order for them to uh, stay alive. Because if this will not be completed, the seven, the seven loculi or the seven wonders, they will die. No? So that's why there's certain age limit at the age of 13, <coughs> 14, if they won't, won't be able to find the, the seventh, if they won't be able to complete, then they will die. So here, clearly in page 97, what they, they found, I think, uh, it's not yet seven. Clearly, it's not yet seven. Around my my guess is around. They already completed around four, no four, but uh, they are really struggling, no, because uh, every time they find it, they need to struggle, no, to fight. They need to fight, no. Then the prediction would be while I was reading. Clearly, say so if this is book four, the last book is book five. I was already predicting that they won't be able to. To finish, they won't be able to finish completing the books. No, uh, that's clear to me because you need to to finish book four. You need to buy book five in order for you to to know what happened. No, so clearly, uh, just not clear whether they will die or not. But I think uh, the writer would really make it sure that they will make it to book five, right? So that's the prediction. So they will stay alive. They won't be able to complete the seven powers or the loculi or the seven energy that will heal their genetic anomaly. So there's the thrill. No? So uh, the writer is using the suspense uh, part here uh, as a transition from book four to book five. That's my prediction, that they won't really be able to complete the book. No? And then, so if we compare uh, Jack McKinley with Percy Jackson, Percy Jackson started in book one. Uh, he was 12 years old. Uh, so 12 years old compared to uh, uh, Jack Pakindi, he started 13, and I think he's already 14 years old now. Percy Jackson is more independent and courageous than he is, does not depend on his father. Uh, so if you, if you viewed Percy Jackson, his father was uh, an immortal. Eh? If I'm not mistaken, it was, was it Poseidon? So immortal. So he does not rely on his father. He knows that he was immortal. But he does not rely on his father. But in this case, in this story, uh, in this novel, uh, Jack McKinley was depend was very dependent on his father, and I have uh, proof for that. So, for example, in page fifty one, <clears throat> this is the evidence, no, evidence in the text would show that <clears throat> certain lines like uh, here's a uh, in page fifty one, he's asking his father to escort them via private plane. <laughs> How convenient, right? So page 83, I will text that on my way. Maybe he has some ideas. So in terms of ideas, he's asking for ideas. Just Im imagine, even ideas, he's still asking for his father. And even in transportation, he's asking for his father's help for mode of transportation, right? So, But uh, Percy Jackson didn't do that. So that's the difference. So if we compare the protagonist of Percy Jackson series in, in Rick Jordan series and with uh, Peter Leranges. So, next is uh, the the popping out of Zeus. So the character of Zeus, being the great Greek god, popped out. No, came out in this in this story in chapter seventeen. So in chapter seventeen, uh, Zeus um, uh, fought with them because they were trying to they were wrestling and getting. Uh, I think the fourth or fifth power, you know, they were getting the one locu loculi or loculi uh, from Zeus, and Zeus was was uh, energized because of the presence of that locu loculi, and so they were wrestling, you no, know? they were wrestling with Zeus, the great Greek god, and it appears that Zeus needs the loculus to remain immortal. That's my interpretation. He is fighting for it, you know, uh, Loculus, that power, in order for him to stay immortal. So they fought, fought hard. Uh, the most powerful Greek god, right? So, but even if they possess the other Loculi, Zeus is Zeus, right? So if, 
It is as if Zeus is disrespected and demoted by the author in this book. So, it, it's, it's as if, you know, remember Zeus is the Greek, great Greek god. Eh? So, how is it possible that ordinary, well, they are immortal. Uh, they, they have this uh, genes, genetic genes from the ancient world. But imagine to fight with Zeus uh, and try to and try to wrestle and get the the loculus from Zeus. So it's as if for me, my interpretation would be the effect to me is that I don't know if this is really the true Zeus or he is just a a copycat. No, maybe he's just he is just imitating Zeus. But here clearly they are fighting Zeus, the spirit of Zeus. Uh, uh, to get uh, one power to complete the seven. So that's my interpretation there. That's the effect on me as far as uh, Zeus. No? Uh, now, there is excitement on the part of the reader to find out the mystery to Jack's mother, Nancy. So for me, the connection that I felt, the emotion that I felt uh, in him trying to find his mother, Nancy. So his mother, Nancy, just disappeared. One day she just disappeared, and she she didn't say anything. She didn't uh, say goodbye. So that's that's one a mystery that uh, as a reader I want to find out. So what made her leave her family? There must be a reason, right? So you need to find out why. Nancy is also a genetic scientist, like uh, uh, his father. The reason. So it was revealed no, in, in, this, in this book that the reason why Nancy, the mother, uh, the genetic scientist, uh, left or her family uh, would be she joined a, a secret group known as the Masa. There are two rival groups trying to look for the, uh, trying to account for all these descendants who are disappearing. They're trying to find for a solution, trying to find healing trying to find cure but they have different approach it seems like in in the story uh masa is uh is a breakaway group it, it's like they're being treated as the the rebels that's why when they came to know that nancy joined the masa one of the secret groups they had an impression that she became a rebel but then in there was an encounter here that they were captured, the teenagers, no, Jack McKinley, were captured by the Masa people. And so they're, they're uh, the, the character of Marco, he wasn't, he wasn't the prince of Atlantis. It was a joke. He was just one of, uh, one of those who joined Masa. Uh, they, they were jokingly branding him as a rebel. But then they found out, when they were captured, they found that the mother was there. And so it was an opportunity for the mother to explain. So they had a very, very emotional encounter. So for those of you who, who departed or separated from their mothers, no, as early as teenagers or very young age, uh, as early as uh, a child, no, you would be affected by this uh, part where, uh, like on my part as well, no. I, I felt the emotion, especially when the mother was explaining, I need to do it because I need to join Masa because I was already, I need to help them find out a cure because I was also threatened. If I'll not help them, something bad will happen to your family. So she needs to make an ultimate sacrifice to leave her family and join the, the rebel, rebel group, uh, which is known as the Masa. But then she would also want, other than to save them, she would also want to find out what's the medicine for this, what's the cure for this genetic anomaly, why are they disappearing? No? And so they also are tasked to find the, the complete the seven loculi. No? And so this is really a family oriented, uh, family -oriented uh, motif, no? wherein there's the father image, then there's the mother image. For me, this is really uh, out of 10 in terms of. Uh, storyline. I, I love the connection between McKinley and the mother. So I like that because, you know, it somehow affects me because I also had this uh, unfortunate uh, uh, connection with my mom. When I was uh, a child, I was separated from her. No? And then, so, uh, 
then there's this uh, point uh, in chapter 44 where they met uh, when, when where they fought the uh, the curse of the king so who is the curse of the king so the title of the book is curse of the king so that's the question the curse of the king king there refers to king ular uh, king ular of atlantis so king ular of atlantis they battled with him in order for them to get a very powerful uh, locu loculus that i will not be revealed because that will be a spoiler alert i want you to read the book and find out what was this loculus that they fought hard they want to get this in order for them to complete the seven but they were not able to to get the this seven uh this loculus because it was very strong king ular was very strong in fighting and very exciting also one of the one of the friends no the, there are three friends eh? i will not reveal the name try to find out what is the object what is the loculus being being battled and who was during the fight uh, one one uh, character uh, from the main characters actually was transported accidentally because they were fighting uh, since King Ular was very strong he was able to pull one character uh, one friend and then that friend was transported to another dimension no? another dimension while they were fighting uh, dimension of the rift you know the setting is made of rift eh? dimensions no so if you if you are watching this in movies no they're transporting from present world to the ancient world and one character was transported to another dimension at the end of the story so that's a good technique because you need to find out what happened to her no? at the uh, what happened to her in book five so and so the adventure continues so really my prediction was right so he has to really uh, end the book five without them being able to complete the the seven powers and so the story ended with uh, one character i will not mention and i want you to find out what was the loculus being battled what was uh, king ular protecting uh, that they need to get that's a power eh? and you need to find out what is that so you have to read book four uh, curse of the king so again uh, curse of the king it's because it's king ular of atlantis so that's why it's the curse of king ular okay so thank you for i hope you uh, find this blog uh, informative and i hope that uh, you will also try to uh, get a copy uh, I think there's already a free copy online so just just try to uh, search and then maybe if you have time read this so uh, so maybe not book five for my next book so I'm thinking of reading another book okay for my next book I'm going to read Robert Ludlum's Apocalypse Watch so I have not read the, the synopsis yet so I will have to uh, take time so this was coming from I had a this as a gift from a former colleague in the department uh, of the English department of Wimsu so uh, I'm going to read this so this is a very challenging book so we will try to uh, review this uh, I hope I'll give justice to my book review so I'll need to have to read this to take time to read uh, slowly this is quite a challenging uh, espionage type of <coughs> motif no so thank you for uh viewing this vlog so i hope that you will continue on reading and uh, there's really there are really a lot of values that you can get uh, out of reading other than it can help you uh with the boredom that you are experiencing and as well it can also help you with your memory uh, for me it really helps a lot no, in terms of just staying at home so as an introvert uh it shows that you know i i am really an introvert because i i love doing this i'm reading continue on reading and uh, have a nice day bye see you later